Where do, where do all the recordings go? So, um, they, good question. They, first of all, there's a, um, a channel on YouTube that they go up on. Oh, my god. I'll goodness. send you a link to it. I got um, to be mindful. I, I, I didn't realize we were, we're on permanent <laughs> record here. That's a little scary. I better mark my keys and keys. Oh, well, you haven't said. I, I, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, no, right. I, I, okay. I just didn't, I, I had no idea they were actually being published, but it makes sense <laughs> that you were trying to. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's what we've done for, I don't know, 18 years now. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. But, um, and then, and then it, we also put it up on the um, NWP Studios, the studio site. Um, there are invitations there, and we put them up there as well. But so thank you for asking that. I'm sorry I didn't make that clear. Um, but yeah, you don't want to say anything about your boss. Or... No, I don't, want to say anything, I don't want to say anything official. Oh, <laughs> you God. know, you haven't yet. I think you're fine. I, I, I agree. I, I, I'm but really I, happy. I'm sorry. What? Well, I just, I, really? just I, I think it's good to know, and I'm going to go check out. How that's presented and try to get a sense of their of that viewership as well because i'm just curious oh it's yeah it's not great um <laughs> a bit but it's not it doesn't matter it's, it's a record and you know, right. yeah fine marina um and and Wait, bob you, you might want to move off of the middle a little bit because you're right on top yeah. of your chair there we go okay so um welcome very right. let's do a quick go around say say what you're thinking feeling your thoughts right now and um, and uh, David, why don't you start us off here? Uh, I'm still banging away at the same uh, puzzle I've been thinking about for a while, which would be how to, what's the system you could use to create an input for teachers like us, non-technical people, to develop prompt sets and sample conversational chats that would guide students in good writing practice and, and sort of trying to Hold, and this is going to make it sound negative, but it means it positively. How to create a kind of a working sandbox for creating original text before students kind of go madly out into kind of generating full template work. So it has to do with that writing coach question. And um, a couple things keep a couple things are coming up about how to. First, it was how to handle some open source language models. Then it was. Additionally, how to think about fine tuning. Uh, it was a bit of a rabbit hole in understanding sort of the protocol and the Python work required for fine tuning. Now there's sort of the uh, an interest in sort of more refined prompt engineering, which is much more accessible for people like me because it's really simply language. And then that suggests there might even be something as simple as a, a basic Google form that could be used. Um, to engage a community of educators to think about use cases for themselves and sort of script out ideal scenarios where a bot might behave in ways that one would try to emulate. And, you know, in theory, if one could gather those prompts together, um, that could be used to inform the training of a bot. So I've been working kind of an ancillary way at that, which is the ongoing question. You might have noticed for the exercises you've done, Paul, I keep I keep creating the, my learning partners are, you are a experienced educator and NLP expert, mm -hmm. you know? So it's really like trying to masquerade as someone, uh, as having some, uh, some machine intelligence that can make me smarter about understanding this. The most recent exercise, and I'll wrap with this, was I basically said, write the equivalent of a project proposal that could be used for fundraising as well as workflow to engage a community of professional educators and local funders. And lo and behold, it wrote sort of a B minus C plus version of that. But there it was. So I want to go bang at some of those sections and see if it can get more granular in terms of actual deliverables. So it's been interesting to sort of th think, see, and play with it as a project manager or something along those lines. So that's what I've been doing. Any questions, thoughts to throw back at David? Thank you for opening up with so sure. much but yeah. well yeah it asked, sounds uh, like kind of a service for teachers right to and students yeah, yeah. To be able to make it uh easier to make the prompts yeah well yeah i think it starts with people like 
us who were on the call. Um, in all the work I used to do with technology, teachers were always the primary learners and, and customers, so to speak. And there's so much domain expertise in what you all know and how you handle your students and what you do to pace the information and to solicit feedback and to guide certain kinds of engagement. And, you know, the AI is giving us a really interesting sort of channel in which to operate. And I think it would be really exciting if we could figure out a kind of a, a light footprint way for educators like you, well, like you, Chris, and like the rest of us to go into a simple Google form and enter some use case information in ways that feel very familiar, but export some really interesting and thorough uh, mastery learning information that could be used to train a bot, as opposed to having to go into a computational linguistics world. So it's really thinking about how conversations with what you've been curating, Paul, can really seed and collate uh, best practices that could be used to train the bot. and. Um, that's that's how I'm thinking about it. Correctly or no. So David, are you are you presuming that you're going to train the bot up front, but will it also learn and grow to adapt to what it's told you or what you've asked it in the past? Yeah, I mean there are all kinds of assumptions about what these language models sort of do intrinsically in terms of their own learning and um, in terms of the information that they're aggregating and whether you're working in a constrained way on a small domain of inf domain set of information or whether you're sort of working off of large APIs into these large language models. But the assumption is that you're training the bot so it's getting smarter and smarter based on this input from these this, this, bot, this group of experts. And everyone on this call has been working with and has experts, whether they're colleagues in department meetings or people in work setting settings or a wider network, I mean, the writing project being sort of the best example of it, the most obvious one. So, uh, yeah, Bob, the goal is that it should train itself on this domain expertise and it makes it sort of a, a deep vertical around that kind of stuff. But ideally, it would have an interface that would be simple and easy to use, you know, for all of us, you know, so people could go to it as a kind of best practice and it would then train a bot. Yeah, I'd love to learn more and I, and I don't want to monopolize things but i i just wanted to share one thing from last week that yeah. was resonating with me and that was a quote from the teacher i think you shared it paul that was given around you know um yeah the i basically if i remember correctly you know i don't i want to use ai in my classroom but first you know the students must learn how to write and then they yeah. can use it and that has just stuck with me ever since then and i think that paradigm is what what we should try to figure out how to um, kind of, I don't know, how to confront, interrogate, and 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 help people see how that old that old definition of writing, that old paradigm of what writing is, is 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 just getting smashed, um, and 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 everything. The old definition of painting, the old definition, like Marina, what you were sharing about kind of journaling and. And, and seeking meaning in the visuals and then using that to see more reflection like that all the old paradigms are being broken so how, how how do we invent new paradigms on the fly without it being too too scary yeah just to say i, I followed up with her um and she's been very generous to she and i we're meeting tomorrow evening and just uh, and, and what I've decided is I'm not going to go in and try to convince her of anything about AI. And I, I guess I, I think, I think you'll agree that this is the way to go. Um, that that instead I want to say, how do you plan to use now comment? What are your goals in the classroom? And then as I'm hearing that, you know, to kind of say, oh, did you know it could do this? Did you know it could do that? You know, and just sort of sprinkle the conversation with possibilities. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, like, so uh, words, uh, in other words, I don't think we want to get into a debate with somebody who comes to the table like that. But I also think there are ways to kind of suggest new, like you're saying, things are changing. Um, so I, I assume that, yeah. that perspective is, is very common, if not the mm -hmm. dominant 
paradigm of most educators around AI. It's like, I don't, I don't want it to really change. I want to use it, but I don't really, really want it to change the way I teach or the way, um, the way students learn. It's just, it's another tool, but nothing's, you know, that's, I just assume that's the, what do you guys think? Does that feel like the dominant paradigm still? You know, it, what it feels like to me, Bob, is I remember when I saw, when cell phones became ubiquitous and teachers suddenly had to make a judgment call about whether they were going to let kids keep them in the class or not. And, you know, by and large, people realized they needed to let them keep them, you know, and that the creative ones found ways to sort of have them be put in a box and then opened up or even better used in the learning, which is to say that some amount of that seat time, to use that word, was given over to managing that technology because it was not going away. And I kind of feel that the AI stuff is in the same category. Like, I don't know that one could go back and say, one could, you know, we're going to write with a pen and a paper or right. we're going to write with a, a, a word processing application that's not connected to the internet. And uh, then we're going to go, you know, so I, I think that's, so I, I look at it as like, sadly, to, you raised this question before, like, and it'll be interesting, Paul, to hear what your colleague has to say as she teases out her own thinking, but mm -hmm. it seems inevitable that teachers are going to sort of need to front load their engagement in writing with this tool in hand because it's an act, it actively creates, it, 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 it takes care of the act of, create, of writing, full right. stop. So I, it seems non-negotiable that you can say, oh, we won't do that. It's like, no, this is what it means now to your point. So it feels like it's going to eat into, into teaching time, which is so interesting the way technology sort of takes more and more space in the skill development and the skill requirements of kids. You watched it with CS and you can see it with STEM and a whole host of things. I'm not not talking smack about either one of those, but it's feels like another technology that's um, that's becoming ubiquitous. So yeah, I think it mm -hmm. invites up some some, some creative uh, and really focused design ideas to sort of make it really integrated and um, be really clear about it. Marina, what do you has been about that? I want to invite Marina into the conversation. Just what yeah, do you what, what have you been thinking about or what do you yeah. You're you're still on vacation for a few weeks, but yeah. Yeah, I don't go back until well the kids don't go back until the day after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Um oh, wow. But how are you and your colleagues thinking about these things? Well, I mean, I work with a really, like my my superintendent's like really into all of this. He's really supportive and encouraging. Um, and then my director of technology just published her own book all on leveraging AI um, in the classroom. So they're, you know, so I'm mm -hmm. working with some people who are really open to, um, exploring and growing and learning more about it um, and recognizing that it is a new, another element of, you know, our world in the, in the school setting. Um, but I know like Alana and I are gonna keep working, uh, sorry, Alana is my director of technology. Uh, mm -hmm. We're gonna be working around like some of that like prompt work with like developing visuals um, in the fall. Mm -hmm. Just like the writing part of it and seeing what comes out of it. So with with kids developing visuals. Yeah, but yeah, but they wouldn't be interacting with it would be something like we would input their writing. Mm -hmm. See what comes out and then do some writing. Kind of like what I've been doing with my journal. Mm -hmm. Marina, how many uh, how many people, what percentage of your colleagues at your school think about it the way you do? Would you say? Um, I think there's a handful of people that are really intrigued by it, like me. So, yeah. um, and our, and, and we're definitely tinkering around with it this past year, um, since it became available in November. Yeah. The director of technology did get, she gave a, uh, I guess it was, you know, one of our faculty presentations and people were pretty quiet. They didn't really have much to say. Sometimes that just happens in faculty meetings. Sometimes you want to get at, like the after school thing. Um, but I did have one colleague say something to me at the end of the year because we are um, we are starting a new uh, science 
program for our students this year that they had done in the middle school, the FOSS program, uh, if anyone's familiar with it. And um, I was really excited because I had experience using it in New York City public schools. And I was talking with this science educator who's our middle school teacher. And he, I said, like, you know, are we're going to be prioritizing science time then too, as well as so we're getting this new like curriculum. And, and he, he, I said, like, I said to him, I was like, kids need more science. They need more of this. They need more of this. And he said, he said some kind of like, what do they need more of that with now with chat GPT? And it was, <laughs> it was definitely like sarcastic. And I, you know, I didn't know how to take it, but um, sure. I didn't know how to respond to it because I was kind of like, I guess I'm on the mindset of in the middle of, of it, you know, like I'm not one way or the other. I can, I can see different spaces um, where I may want to you know, kind of toy with it in some places where I, I don't want it. And Paul knows, because I've told him some things where I'm like, no, I don't, I'm not going to use it for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chris, what's it been like for you? You're, you're, you've started, you were describing right before we started recording that your students are coming in slowly, 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah. So we're doing half days. This is our first week. So we just finished day three today. Um, and so we the classes are really short like 15 minutes and then 20 minutes but you know there'll be 20 minutes through the rest of the week so it doesn't give you a lot of time so i have not done really any digital stuff in my english class we've actually used um like i keep a journal like a handwritten journal uh and they will uh keep a handwritten journal too and the first thing I had them do was write a handwritten letter to me. So it's, uh, you know, been a lot of just uh, pen on paper. Well, not even a lot. Uh, but what we've done has been pen on paper. I read my letter to them today and just talked about, you know, maybe that's that's kind of a better introduction than my syllabus and my disclosure statement and all that. Um, because, you know, it says a few things about writing. Um, so partly it's because the classes are so short, but partly it's because I think every day, this is kind of what I've evolved to, is we're gonna start unplugged. Um, nice. So they, they will read uh, from a physical book that, uh, you know, so there's like free reading books and then uh, they still buy a book a quarter. So they'll, um, we've got a class read and then they're independently reading. So that's a lot of re book reading and then they'll do some, you know, physical journaling. But we talked about, you know, like the kind of the stuff that I have in my journal. So I showed them stuff. It's like sometimes I'll sketch something to help me think about what I'm writing or vice versa. Sometimes I have like a receipt <laughs> that I taped in the journal or, you know, like there's this little printer that you can get where you can print little stickers like photos and I'll plop those in there, what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah i mean it's been no ai we haven't really even talked about ai well, yet but no computers yet too right right yeah no computers and um yeah no cell phones it's just been kind of you know kind of icebreaker stuff i guess um, is that is that routine of of pay of just reading time or scrapbooking and journaling or notebooking like that is that going to be a thing that students do every day every week and when they're in chris sloan's class they go oh, yeah and they would reach in their backpacks or whatever pull this thing out and they know they're going to give x amount of time of the period over to that yeah that and i'm not i'm not alone i like my colleagues um for the most part i would say do a similar kind of approach in our mm -hmm. english department um, yeah but that said, you know, we were two of us for sure, three of us for sure. And it's a small department. There's only six of us. But three of us were pretty all in as soon as chat GPT came out about we better start exploring this. And so um, they're very eager to, you know, share their knowledge with the rest of the faculty and the, and the rest of the faculty at my school, which is about like 60 teachers. They're all um, eager to explore it as a tool. I think I shared a couple of weeks ago in our handbook, it, it even opens up with like the, the good potential of AI and then maybe what you you shouldn't do is like, you know, represent you as, you know, use it to represent you or do your work. So 
I mean, I think it's like Marina, it sounds like my school is kind of has a similar ethos as far as chat GPT goes. It, it will be open, um, but uh, I mean, it won't be blocked, I should say. But, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about how that's the equitable kinds of things and, and all that. So that's what kind of drew me to what Paul has going with Now Comment and Youth Voices, which this class I've used for many years and I'll use this year too. So we started off pretty, I don't know, analog is not really the right word, but unplugged, I guess. And then mm -hmm. um, we'll slowly start mixing in the other stuff with the start being really the big thing that they're into is like they're, they're already thinking about college, you know, like 90% at least of them will go to college next year. And so the college essay is a big thing. So that's one piece of writing that they really care about every year. So that's mm -hmm. where I'm thinking the idea of that, you know, say it back, for example, um, the, the say back kind of uh, AI. Mm -hmm. or, or some writing coach of some sort. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. But but even the yeah, the say it back um, just because and I may have mentioned it before, but it is such a weird genre, the college application essay that they've been told, you know, they're all ramped up about it because their parents are on them about it. And then the school kind of reinforces like, you know, we're definitely like college prep. So, area. Chris, yes. I, I just want to kind of um, define what we could do in the next half hour together um, <laughs> yeah. in this way. Um, that we are, if we could be, a cons and Marina, uh, you know, you'll figure out your role in this, but and if we could be consultants to Chris, uh, Chris is somebody who mm -hmm. you have, you have this, um, you've stated in different places that you, you want to have a balance between the digital and the paper work uh, in, your, in your classroom, but you're also interested in AI and Bob Montgomery is here saying AI is smashing all of our models about writing. <laughs> and and I'm here encouraging you to use these makes to get AI get started and so forth. I, so if, and David has his, anyway, if we could be like consultants to Chris uh, as an example kind of here of how we would talk to a teacher about where AI begins, how, how he starts to think about it. Not that you haven't already, Chris. Is that fair? Could we do that? Good to so, me. so who would, what would you say to Chris about, he just introduced how he's starting his class. He wants to get started with AI somehow. He's familiar with now comment youth voices, but they haven't used AI, AI much. What would you say to Chris? Well, I wanted to put this in group chat, but I don't know how to access a group chat, but I was oh. just looking at Chris. Would, go ahead. Yeah, Chris's um, responsible use document, which I love, and the Michigan State, and really appreciate everything you shared, Chris, on that front. But there's a statement in the plagiarism clause that I, I, I read just now. I was wondering, well, how, why, why? And the statement is, is it, it is a student's responsibility to ensure their work is original and appropriately cited per the conventions of a specific class. Like, that makes sense to me, but I just I kind of <laughs> wonder, like, okay what is original and that this is where i get to <laughs> and, and why what like that's why i get confused because it feels like the paradigm's breaking but we're still trying to hold on to it by by saying by defining originality in an old way when we've got this new possibility that actually as you said david you're not i mean the author is a is a collaboration with I don't, you know, how do you define the author, you know, at this point? So I guess, Chris, I'm just wondering if you've, how people are going to, how, how are you going to implement that policy at school? And right. That question. I mean, the whole citation thing, I think was that part of it, you know, that's written by someone who probably hasn't been composing a lot with AI, I'm guessing, because mm -hmm. I don't really know how you cite, um, that I, that's another question but i think the originality part is is interesting it's like on the one hand you don't want kids just hit and sub, uh, generate and then copying and pasting and putting that in as their own work and so like that's definitely not original that's but, that, um, we agree I, on that what's that i said we agree i think we all agree that 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 would be a very bad use of ai mm -hmm. sure yeah and so i think then um let's think about how we 
come up with our writing now or before that, you know, a lot of times we'd have kids get together and they would read a draft to someone and they'd get feedback from their partners. Then they'd go do some reading and they'd maybe some, cite some sources there. Um, but you know, the, the talking part from their peers was never cited. You right. know, like I got a great idea by talking to my brother um, about this thing, but you know, that whole conversation was never cited and, and yet it's still original, you know? And so, yeah, the originality thing is a bit of a stickler, but I still think that if you use AI as a thinking partner, it's still original. It's just, I'm not saying generate that thing for me, uh, even large parts of it. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a pretty rough, uh, take there, but, um, the, te the teacher, Bob, that you were quoting earlier, she's from Houston. I'll just say the Houston teacher, the Houston teacher wants analysis, right? So mm -hmm. what, what I, what I want to try to say both to Chris, go through the originality question and the analysis question is we now have tools that your students can use to be more original and more do better analysis than they've had before. I'm not sure that's true. Yeah, I think it is. Well, yeah. just to play devil's advocate, you know, let's mm -hmm. say, um, let's do the um, like argumentative writing. Let's say, and I want the real common problem. Well, I why, have with, why don't you why don't you stay with the college essay? The the college. Okay, the yeah. college essay. Sure. Yeah. Um, so you know, I mean, that's based on their. You can imagine mm -hmm. those typical things like who's someone who's influenced you or what's um, a way that you've shown that you're a leader or those kinds of things. Uh, those those are things from their life. OK, and so I could write something and then do the say back writing coach mm -hmm. who says, you know, tell me what I just said. And then if I hear that back, just like if I read it to someone, another human and the human, I said, hey, could you just paraphrase what I said? whether it's the AI or the human, it's still the same process of like, here's what I'm hearing you say. And then me as writer, I'm like, oh, wait, that's not quite what I got across. To me, those are pretty similar things that are going on. One is just machine generated and the other is like my peer in the classroom. And so I'm not so sure that's fundamentally different. Um, I'll just put that out there. You know, one thing that strikes me, and I keep coming, I'm realizing that as I'm listening to what you guys are saying, I keep coming back to this in my own research and my own noodling around is that I keep wanting to come up with a format or a template that would document my own thinking as I'm engaging with these tools. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Chris, your point is, yeah, when I talk to my brother or I was out talking to my friend or I watched this video or whatever, and it gave me an idea, we just sort of absorb it and then we kind of come back and we kind of reshape it. But this stuff provides, you know, transcript of, of that, right? And and it, it sort of begs the question, how, what do you do with that? Like, are you going to just cut and paste it? No, but can you comment on the way you're absorbing it? And in, in so doing, describe your own learning process and you'll learn something new in that, in that. And it reminds me a lot of watching what kids would do when they would go, when they would go and they would maintain a portfolio through the year. And maybe just to pick up on what you were suggesting, Chris, or what you were talking about with the notebook or the, the pen to paper or the scrapbooking, like if that persists through a semester, that's going to be a wonderful document. And in a typical sort of portfolio presentation moment, the learner would pick out pieces they like and say why they like them as a capstone exercise. And that whole time span with things that we, the reflection happening at the end now gets totally compressed and it's almost happening iteratively in real time. But the question is, if, if that's part of the thinking process, is there a light way that kids can comment on their own thinking development in relation to the tool, if one's going to use the tool? And is that going to be just too cumbersome to teach teach with, or is that going to be illuminating for the kid as they understand their own thinking? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, to me, the difference is that you can generate so much more text and transcript yeah. now than you could, because you know it's always been honestly problematic to to have kids first of all just complete a portfolio that's that's decent yeah. and then and then to do the reflective piece on it yeah. is has usually not been really extensive in my own 
background yeah. because I just Hard, like yeah. that. That's a lot of stuff already, and there's one of me, and there's lots of them. Yeah. And so now, if I'm generating so much more text, it's like that seems different, uh, just in the vast amount of stuff that I could choose from. But kind of uh, for me. Um, Partly, I want to say it's unmanageable as a teacher how much stuff they could probably generate. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the th differences, I, I would say fundamentally what I just described, they're not very different. Like if I have a peer who says, you know, here's what I'm hearing you say, and then AI say it back kind of thing. I guess the difference is AI will just never gets bored with me. And right. my peer will. So, yeah, you know, yeah. and that ends pretty quickly. Like if the peer is like, okay, we did it, let's move on. So that's Just as a as a as a meta note, um, in in consulting with a teacher, uh, who says what you just said, it doesn't sound much different to me. Um, what you're doing now, I I would want to encourage. Like, yeah, to some degree, yes, but how is it different? Is worth thinking about. I just mm -hmm. wanted to say, I think. Yeah. So, so keep saying that, or what are you saying? Right. You I mean, I think that the more if if a student is really persistent and like say it back. Oh, I'm going to write it again. Say it back. Oh, I'm still not getting the point across. Say it back. The human peer is going to get tired of that. But uh, the AI, if the student is persistent, could break, you know, some, you could get farther along toward uh, distilling their point maybe than they would with a uh, human. And so, you know, that's kind of different in potentially. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying the process seems similar to me. Yeah. That reminds I, me, Bob. Sorry, go ahead, Paul. No, no, Dave, go ahead. It reminds me of your, your idea, Bob, where you were talking about hitting a tennis ball on the backboard, right? I mean, some people do that endlessly, but, you know, maybe there's, and to your point, Chris, getting people to complete a portfolio is a challenge, then to reflect on it's even worse, and then having the time to assess it and sort of include it in a, in a, in a, in a collaborative process of reflection or assessment is, is extraordinarily hard. But as with all this AI stuff, it seems to be just decompressing and speeding up the velocity of this stuff. And that seems mm -hmm. sort of like just the gravity you have to live with now. And I wonder if there aren't moments in your learning arc, whatever it might be, or the, you know, where there might be mo a pullout moment. We used to, uh, the term I used to use in curriculum was push-in units or something, right? It was sort of supplemental to the material. Where someone would take a take a moment of their thinking over some period of time and do the iterations you're describing and generate some kind of summary document for themselves, which perhaps would re reflect the iterations that are happening with the machine or on their own, but in a light way try to get at that. Uh, it feels like it could be sort of rote, busy work, but at the same time, it it, it's, it is an acknowledgement of what you were saying, Bob, which is that the nature of text creation has changed and. If one's going to use AI, one's going to be operating in a different modality. What are the ways we could in, we could maybe document that without screwing up a teacher's life and a kid's routine, but have it be very much visible in the workflow and in the engagement? Document what? Document their thinking. Like if if there are ten assignments and ten 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 learning moments in a in a quarter. Uh, every third one is going to involve something like what Chris just described. So the kid and the teacher are unburdened with this concatenated exercise of formative assessment and reflection all the way through the year. But there are moments when there's a small kind of culmination where you actually reflect in this way and document it with the transcripts, plural. And that becomes part of the artifact. I'm just trying to think of that because so much stuff is getting generated. So, but yeah, I mean, I keep feeling like... Um, I want to say, hey, isn't isn't the what we've been developing around the um, now comments dialogue journal part of the mm -hmm. answer to some of this? Yes. Yeah, Chris, Chris, you've it done is. you've done some uh, you've done a couple of weeks of that. Mm -hmm. Do you think do you imagine you could bring that process to your students pretty quickly, so that there is a place where they could start recording their experience with AI? as they're using it you know you you mentioned the word quickly i yeah, don't well, i don't think, know when yeah, yeah yeah i don't think it's going to be quick um okay. because i see it as a pretty gradual kind of uh uh introduction you know 
that's a lot to think about uh, for uh, these kids, I think. Like almost all of them are pretty familiar with generating chat GPT and they, you know, they, they uh, are pretty, they know how to, you know, write an essay that's, you know, what's the cause of the civil war. If you give them that task, I think they know how to use chat GPT to put something out. Right. Um, but, um, you know, the part about slowly introducing them to the idea of even buying into AI as like a thinking partner is going to take some time to have people buy into that, I think. Um, wow. Without, you know, I, I think I just think it's going to take a little bit of time. So once we get that and we try it a few times, which I think I can do in this first sequence on the college essay thing, I think we can, you know, play okay. with that. Um, that's a pretty big step right there. Could they capture that? Could they write some of that? Yeah, they could do that in a, in a, you know, AI kind of diary. Well, but, but they could just put up, they could put, put their essays up as now common documents and then they have AI to use next to it. If they want yeah, to, but they, they it's, okay, I'm talking about the college essay, which is a really yeah. weird genre where it's almost like it is really written for a stranger and only that stranger in a faraway place in a college admissions thing. So, you know, putting it on, putting it digitally, a lot of them don't want to do it because, you know, their growth mm -hmm. moments, their times where, you know, it could be really personal stuff that they share but, with complete But strangers. the documents are private. Yeah, but, you know, like putting a private, anything, I always say, like, you want to put something private on something called the World Wide Web seems like, um, a, you know, problematic. Yeah. Interesting. You know, even private, I, I don't know how many times teens are just like the, the TikTok was just between my friends. And, you know, I mean, we know that, but um, I think they're becoming a little more careful about um, putting, you know, I do sense this reticence of um, putting stuff online. They're, they're kind of getting it now. Um, and I think that one is, is tricky. Now, the other assignments I do, that's not the same thing at all. But the, the one that I'm leading off with that they really care a lot about, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, we could, well, I'll see. I'll see how it goes. I mean, I guess we could keep it private. I, I mean, I, I think this is really good sort of conversation about how, how does this happen. Because you did say you wanted them to do AI, I think you did, with the yeah. CBA, right? So right. How, would that, how would they do that if it's on paper? Well, you could, or, or not yeah, share, right. yeah, in some way. So, I you wouldn't have to keep a, uh, you know, like do an uh, an AI journal about it. No, no, no. I'm just saying they do a document of that of that of that essay that they've written. Right. So you a could private use document that they only share with you. Right, right. but like how I was using uh, AI sometimes on Youth Voices was I was just opening up a draft. And going to chat GPT and plugging stuff in and copying and or putting that in notes or copying and pasting it. But I wouldn't I wouldn't even publish that as a draft. I can use that tool, copy and paste and put it so, elsewhere. I don't have to save it anywhere that because you know you can generate and copy and paste in my own. Yeah, but I have ethical problems with I, I do with with asking kids to use chat GPT. So in youth voices. Oh, oh, so they're using it in youth voice. That's what I mean. Yeah. Got it. So, so, some that's of what you were think so walk me through what you were thinking to do with these essays then. Yeah. Right. So you Play could um, use the, the AI playground that's in youth voices mm -hmm. and just like open up a draft and mm -hmm. keep generating stuff in that space and the stuff that, you know, yeah, like you could copy and paste okay. all that. What's that? No, fair enough. I'm I'm following you. Yeah, I'm getting it. Yeah. You know, and and you could save it in notes, or you could just copy and paste stuff, which is what I did sometimes. Not that I was writing private stuff, but just like I didn't feel like publishing that stuff, even as a draft. Um, you know, so you could actually do it there without putting it as a private document on now comment. So, mm -hmm. Sure. So that particular assignment, I'm just saying, like, there's other assignments they can do where they could do what you're talking about. That one, I'm not so sure that's a, um, they're going to buy into that one. Because it is really, 
I hear over and over, they're like, we really want feedback on our college essay, but I don't want to share it with my peers. Right. You know, it's talking about. Oh, yeah. Remember, you know, personal issues. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm helping a, a, a niece with a essay, a statement right now, and it's, it's really private. Mm -hmm. No way that they, they would want to appear to see their personal statement. Yeah. So you think you could use youth voices in, in a way that would preserve that privacy? I think Chris? so, because you're not ever going to, uh, I think there's an option there to not, um, you know, to not publish. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah. It just goes away. Like if you X out of that, it's like, it's not saved as far as I can tell. Okay. But where do they keep the work then? They, I feel like they would think that their Google Docs are more secure because that's probably where their original they're thing. Not. <laughs> What's that? They're not, though. Well, <laughs> but I, that's I, where I would say the majority of my kids' things are in their, you know, Google Docs. Okay. And I understand that's that's an issue, but. No, no, that's, I, I'm, I'm hearing you. Yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. So Google Docs feels like a private place for them to work. Yes, I think they would. That's as private as it's going to get. I think they would. I think they believe that. Yeah. Now, OK, that's a separate conversation. But I would say that's that's their no, belief. No, no. I no, agree. And, but I mean, Google Docs is going to quickly become, well, not quickly, but it's eventually gonna, it's going to morph into what you're doing with now comment soon, Paul, right? Because it's got. I think so. And also, I don't. You know, I think the privacy controls there are no different. Yeah, I mean, I think and, this and they are now common. So you know. yeah, but so I'm just, um, I'm just curious mean, how the cultural sort of understanding of, and you right. know, I'm, I'm not denying. You know, if that's how people feel, that's how people feel. But yeah, so that's technologically, I'm not sure it's true. That's all. Right, I I'm with you on that, but I think that's yeah. kind of a progression I would do, and then when we mm -hmm. start getting into stuff that's more public writing, inquiry writing on youth voices. Like that's where we'll start doing more of the the now comment, um, you know, the different um, Moloch and Moloch, those personas. The, diff the different kinds of. Yeah, yeah like that stuff of. is great to, like I really believe that, that that's how you learn the difference between private writing and public writing is, um, you know, in those spaces. So that's why I've always used them for there. There's, I'm just talking about one assignment that doesn't, work as well i think no no, no i and you're bringing up really important points about when we get public and we and what assignments go go public and what assignments stay private which stay in notebooks which you know go to different different tech different tools and so forth and that's been a really and, so, and you're very you're very thoughtful about that i don't know if all teachers are but you know so i think that as we work with this stuff with teachers these are, we need to be aware of bringing these issues up and having them tease through them as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's where we talk about audience. It's audience, yeah. but it's also yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe I mean, privacy is is oh, deeper oh. than audience almost. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to say maybe we've got a, a segue here to kind of pivot mm -hmm. and talk about your original idea around makes for educators to have experiences that help them better understand or, you know, kind of reflect or the metacognitive piece that Dave, you keep coming back to, you know, can we end on that note maybe? Cause I'm well, really so, I mean, I can, can I, sorry. So yeah, on the table behind you there or whatever, th there's some notion that there would be three makes one is, Right, to, to just to, um, and I'm using David's notion of here we're setting up our workspace. The ones we did last week, where you do an image and and so a couple of images with a couple of different tools, mm -hmm. learning about some prompt and prompt engineering that way. The the second make I think would be setting up your um, your notebook um, in now comment, but you know that that's worth thinking about. And then the third one would be um, commenting on 
stuff on, and, and this is this just follows a, a pattern that we've done, commenting on posts on Youth Voices as an introduction to Youth Voices, and then thinking about building up your own post after that. But not getting to that in this first cycle. It would be just making comments. That's the notion of it. Let me say a little. Somebody mentioned last week as we were as you were giving me prompt like um, Munch, to use Edvard Munch as as the artist and somebody said oh and you could use another artist and just want to say that that was my own experience of learning with um, image generators that if you add three artists together you got something more interesting mm -hmm. and I just read an article worth saying and I'll get around to why I'm saying all this in a second is is um, where you, perhaps in prompting, we, we're, we're, get, we're pretty good at giving prompts personas, but perhaps we could give them multiple personas. And there's even this notion of mega, mega personas. So if you could give, right, if you could give AI um, a, a hundred lawyers to debate your issue, right? Um, what could you come up with? I don't totally understand that. But I do understand how it works in the image stuff, so I'm beginning to understand it in another place. And here's my going to 7-Eleven and mixing the Slurpee flavors and, yes. and, and and not knowing what I what I ended up with. <laughs> I know. So here's my point of, of going down <laughs> down that down that rabbit hole for a second. Um, I want to see. I I I think and Bob, I think you said get yeah, teachers doing this. I want to see people take finding their own their own exploration that way, like so that they can go back and say, "Oh, I did that with the image stuff. I could do that with the text stuff too. Wouldn't that be interesting if I mix this and this?" So that so that there's a creative process that you're doing, right. and then and then you'll know what to bring it back to the classroom. So, it's not that far fetched when you think about it. Like we read mm -hmm. stuff from multiple personas ourselves, you know. Like I, I'm a high school teacher, right? And I read it from a t teacher perspective. But a lot of times I think like as a high school student, you know, how could I, you know, so we have these different parts of our own personality that do kind of come into play almost like different scripts, you know? So is it, so it's an open question. Can you do that to the, the LLMs or not, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and what will you get back if you do? But uh, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, I'm just reminded of it must have been like from 2010 to 2014 before machine learning hit and everyone was messing around with digital stories and media mm -hmm. and remixing was the metaphor of choice. Right. And it, and it almost felt kludgy, like you were going to the cupboard and grabbing different ingredients and you had to sort of take it. You had to format things, you had to download stuff and then you remixed it. And it was a very self-conscious, active exercise. And now it's happening like that, right? In these transcripts. But you were to, you're talking about a remixing exercise and the ability to capture those attributes somehow. Uh, it's fascinating to me. It's really just blows me away how quick this, how quickly this process is moves once it starts once it starts moving. Marina, do you have a response to any of this yet? Or hmm. Just <laughs> hmm. You don't have to. I'm just writing down a lot of stuff as we're talking, <laughs> okay. so enough. I have to read it back. Um, How do we speed up the process for those for those who are, you know, not sure they they they're ready to even engage? Is, are there magic bullets, Chris, that you've seen where people kind of have, have aha's like, oh, I didn't even think of that that way. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit. Uh, uh, because we're just starting, like, to be honest, um, we're kind of starting our inquiry as a faculty over again, um, because the school year is starting and there's a lot of inputs coming yeah. at me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to think about that one, Bob. Yeah, no worries. I, I'm, you know, wondering, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if we, if 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 there were a class taking it from a different perspective, of like I, this is a computer class. This is an AI class, right? And we'll get to the writing. 
if yeah. what what happens if if you do if you do it like that? But I don't know. I'm I'm not you know, sure. That, there was that instructor that that graduate student who came on a couple of weeks ago, and that, mm -hmm. that was his. And he was he was working in a elective course, and it was a computer course where that was his meat and potatoes, right? It was computer. Yeah, that's and nothing was off. Yeah. There was nothing off limits, and you know, of course, it was an elective credit and so forth. But Paul, I'm struck by you know you've done the make one, two, and three. Chris, who's going? Whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the make one, two, and three. And again, mm -hmm. I keep coming back to pay. You know, back the backwards plan and the pacing guide and the sequence mm -hmm. of the syllabus, right? If, if, or even, even this might be applied to a series of teacher, uh, teacher department meetings over the course of a semester. I don't know, just trying to space out makes of different categories in a learning sequence, right? Or in a meeting sequence, just mm -hmm. to expose people to these modalities or these features, uh, almost as sort of like a first step. Um, because it is so overwhelming and immersive and people are maxed out and busy and there are rituals and routines that people are relying on. And it's all happening very quickly. But to your point, Paul, make one and two and three over the course of a semester are going to introduce these kinds of thinking. And this sort of tool is a way for people to get their toe wet. How do you want to think about it? It sort of inverts your question. Like, what if it was a computer class? Well, what if it was just like structured incremental uh, Mm -hmm. makes i don't know I, I i me i like that as a way to sort of make it contained and give it a give it an arc teachers would yeah. and, and, ju and just to, to to make the make the case again for the uh notebook it, it, watching what marina did to take like she made her own project out of the image stuff right so right. that's what i think the journal should or the the notebook the ai notebook should should be is a place for you to find your own inquiry into this new tool, right? And uh, sorry, yeah, I, I reminded of, of the, the quote, you know, if you ain't got it, you can't give it. And right. I think that's really where we are. We we, we have to find ways for our, our adult colleagues to have experiences in which they see the light for back to a better mm -hmm. phrase, like they just, oh, but you can't just tell people about what AI is. I think that's what we're saying. It's like you can't learn how to play golf without or anything without going out and doing it. And then you've got a way to, you have something to say to someone who's trying to learn. Mm -hmm. So is that, is that our, is that our, our pre Yeah, but, but Bob, I think that's now your second sports metaphor. So just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I almost said Tiger okay. Woods. That's <laughs> uh, all right. No, no, it's it's absolutely a great point. Um, so yeah. Uh, is, is that so the is that the is that the premise of the of the make? I just want to be explicit. That's really what we're trying to get at. So yes, um, I, I, for, for teachers. So, so is it for teachers? It absolutely could be. I, it's also designed for students, though. So I don't know. I gotta say, and 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 look, like the, Jill and Bonnie, the two people, teachers I worked with in the spring. Jill is like, so. In another way, it's about taking stuff we've done before. We know how to do well, like we know how to do notebooks. We know how to do journaling, right? And trying to 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 put AI into it. So the makes are about what do we know well, and and how can we how can we investigate how AI can change that up for us, and 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 notice that. Right? So, so yeah, I think that could happen with students if you're ready to. Um, but uh, yeah, so, Chris, what are you going to do this week with them? <laughs> well, um, I only have one. Down class left because we're only going half days. I mean, half. Next, the next week you have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they did some summer reading and mm -hmm. um, and the, we're going to be reading kind of memoirs. And so that's kind of tied into this big deal that they have this application essay. Um, so that's kind of where we're headed over the next week or so. We'll use Stephen King's on writing as kind of a textbook, too, because he gives a lot of advice on writing. But he also mm -hmm. tells a good story. So 
we'll be using master sentences, you know, looking at really good sentences from memoirs, different people's stuff and, you know, analyzing them and um, maybe trying to do some of that stuff, you know, mentor sentence kind of things. Yeah. Cool, cool. So the challenge I have for you is to come back to us with, can you imagine AI in any of that? Yes, does, yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know you can. Cool. Uh, thank you all. Uh, and we'll check in next week. Uh, anybody have any other thoughts they want to jump on before we leave? Thanks for hosting as usual. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff, Thank everybody. You. Have a good night. Okay. Back to you all. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.